congratulations. Yeah. Ellen and Julie on their new election. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. We're so happy to have you. <laughs> um, so we're first going to go through the election of officers. Um, is there a motion for the president? I would like to nominate Sandra Despotnik to be president. Are there any other motions? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Would you like to do a unanimous ballot? Is there a motion for that? Pass the unanimous ballot. Sure. I'll make that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Is there any other discussion? I didn't make that motion. Um, vice president. Do we need a nomination for vice president? I'll nominate Ellen. <laughs> Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Would you like to pass the unanimous ballot? Please? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. We need to have nominations for clerk. I'd like to nominate Julie um, to be the clerk. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Would anyone like to pass the unanimous ballot? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Treasurer. I know Tina wants it. I, I'd like to nominate Tina. I accept. <laughs> Is there a second? All right. Any other oh, no. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Would you like to make a motion to pass the unanimous ballot? I'll make the motion. Pass the unanimous ballot. I second. Aye. 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 Motion carries. There we go. Um, the committees, I know that Tina and Stephanie have been on the long range planning committee. Um, I think it would be wise for you to continue at this point in time. And would you like to be the, like the main, share it with her? <laughs> All right. Okay with you, Tina? Yep. Okay. Um, and Ellen and Julie, you've been on the personnel committee. Is that something you would like to continue, or do you want to do something different? Or? No, I'll stay on the personnel committee. You'd like to have the personnel committee. And policy committee, it's been Ellen and I. I'll stay on that committee. Um, human growth and development, we can either do that right now, or we can wait until later. We can wait until Friday, Wednesday. It's that time where we have to reevaluate that. Yep. So do you want to just wait until fall and talk about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we have everybody here. And, and now we're going to go to the regular board meeting. So. If you would like to speak for public comment, each person has three minutes, and it's their time alone, and you cannot pass that time on to someone else. If you have concerns or comments about individuals, those are not appropriate during public comment time. So please don't say anything that would identify circumstances or a person or a group of people directly by what you say. Be respectful. People on Zoom are welcome to join in public comment. Remain in the chat. I don't know if we can do that because we're not really public at the moment unless you declare yourself public, Tina. You're the only one there, right? No, we have two others. Oh, we do have two yep. others. Okay. All right. Public comment. Anyone here would like to make a comment? Anyone on chat saying they would like to comment? All right. Nope. Then we're going to move forward. Um, approval of financial reports and bills. Yeah. Um, so I went through the financial reports 
um, and I move to approve them. Uh, long range planning, I'll look at it first just yeah. to see how things are going and see where marketing might lead the ship. Mm -hmm. And then there won't be a long range planning in June because my other one's four for sector is going to look present to the board. <laughs> and long range planning will follow the work. Okay. A little bit update on the long range uh, strategic planning process and just Ivy gave a presentation on the timeline and the meeting dates and I think that's launching soon. Uh, just a community night coming up on May 9th. So anyone who's having any questions about the survey or what we're looking to gain from the survey, that'll be from five to six. And I know Angie's working closely with mm -hmm. School Perceptions and Myra and Becca on that from five to six on the ninth. It'll be just prior to the board meeting. Here? Here. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Um, work through the uh, instructional staff handbook. So I put that in the board share drive. It's in the May share drive as well. Um, work with Rick and Aaron. Rick and Aaron, yep, on this handbook. And that uh, came from staff through communication council, generating ideas and thoughts. So anything in that booklet, there's not a lot in there, uh, but anything that's updated will be in red. And then I'll just uh, through the language that's changing. Ivy looked at the curriculum section, added some language to the curriculum section. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, let me know, but that'll be on the agenda for May for either discussion and or discussion afterwards. So one of the last things we're wrapping up in terms of our handbooks. Uh, Neola is going to send out an update, a special update on Title IX in May, and then a rather large update in July and August. So I spent a little time yesterday meeting again tomorrow, um, Denise and I on Neola and policies and administrative guidelines, and we're going to go through that a little bit more tomorrow. If there's anything else that she wants to talk about, and then letters of intent are going out this week for instructional staff and support staff for. Uh, next year with due dates of the 10th of May and the 10th to 31st of May. Anything else? Um, for the high school, most of what I have is in the board report. Um, the summer school booklets are ready to be done and approved for tonight. So once those are done, we'll get those sent out. Um, and then Lisa and I will be working to make sure that Skyward is up and running for the students and parents to be able to register for summer school. Um, and we are also working on making sure that we have a process to be able to accurately take attendance during summer school um, so that we know when we are doing the work later on that we have all the information. And so we're working with hopefully Cody to be able to use our Skyward system already in place for them to be able to take attendance so that it's accurate for both sessions. Um, there may be, we've used spreadsheets in the past. Sometimes that gets a little wonky and they forget to use it. So we're looking at trying to have a more um, concise way for them to be able to do attendance. So we're looking at that as well, but tons and tons of great stuff. Check it out. It's going to be really cool. Um, staffing, we are looking at approving three people tonight, all three of whom I am extremely excited about having on staff. Um, there's a little write-up in the board report, if you saw that, about each one of them. Got a text from one of them tonight who was like, did I get approved yet? I'm really, really excited. So they're, they're excited to be coming here. We're excited to have them. So that'll be fun. Um, a quick touch base about the Northland College Early College Credit, credit Program. Um, don't need to work on approving those right now, like looking at that shift, because we're not sure what Northland is doing yet. 
Um, and once that happens, if we need to, we can reach out to DPI to see if we need some sort of waiver in order to be able to shift their applications from early college credit into start college now. So that's kind of where we're at. We're in a holding pattern until we know what Northland is doing for that. Um, again, the flyers, we just received a whole bunch of these flyers from Becca at Myron. Um, they're all nice and pretty. And so I'm going to have a few kids from NHS and student council go around town and hang them up around town in very public, easy to see places so that they can see what we have happening and then know that they can show up for the um, information night that we have on the night. So that's gonna happen. And then just two other things that I wanna touch base with that weren't in my, in my report because I got them afterwards. Um, our welding kids went to a competition on yesterday, day before, Wednesday, I think it was. Um, what's that? Is it Monday already? It was yesterday. I can't even keep track of my days right now. Um, but we sent seven students. All of them placed really well. Um, Washburn took the top four spots. We took the top, we took five out of the top six spots. So um, our welding program is doing well and all of our kids placed. So that was awesome. Um, the top two came home with brand new welding helmets and all, they were, oh gosh, they were so excited. It was great to see. Um, and then our forensics kids went to state. Um, so we had those four who went, came back. Lainey took a bronze in poetry. Wea took a gold in prose reading, which is awesome. Uh, Cora took a bronze in prose reading. And then Chris took, um, I didn't write that one. I think it was a bronze in solo, um, her solo acting stage. So that was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I have right now. That's it. Excited to hear yeah, that. Yeah, it's awesome. Great. All right, it's elementary um, coming off the spring break and starting the fourth quarter. We've got lots of family events planned for April and May. Uh, we had Week of the Young Child we celebrated in early April. Uh, we just had two family skate nights. We had the roller skates um, from Mr. Goodness Road hosted some skate nights and families and students came in to skate in the gym. And then uh, we're just finishing up the forward check in fourth grade class. Um, and so that's third through, third through six. It also happens at seventh mm -hmm. and eighth grade and then 10th grade social studies. And then previously we had ACT and then three AC, which mm -hmm. we just happened as well. So uh, April is a big testing month for us mm -hmm. and that data will then be reflected on a school tour card in the fall. Um, let's see, next week we are doing something a little bit different. We're celebrating fine arts and performing arts. It's something that's kind of new we're adding. Um, historically, we've had the PTO sponsor a children's theater opportunity. We're gonna continue that. It was previously in the fall this year, it's in the spring. Uh, they're gonna perform Rapunzel. And so that trial term um, play starts on Monday and there'll be a performance on Friday for the whole school and then for the community Friday evening. And then throughout the week, that same group storybook theater will be coming into classrooms to give short presentations and basic intro classes for students. Um, they're also teaming up with local artists in a variety of different fields. Um, to come into the classrooms and share what they are past and then their profession with our students. So we're starting off kind of small this year, but each year I hope we keep building more and more relationships with local artists and just get a chance to share that with all of our students. Uh, let's see, for ELC and Cast Card Kids, they're already gearing up for summer. For the ELC, we will be getting several students off the wait list. Um, we'll almost, I think, have a zero wait list at the preschool room and the toddler room level. And so the four, five day 4K has really impacted that wait, wait list at the older um, ages. So we have several students transitioning in the first and second weeks in June. Um, we do still have a pretty significant wait list in the baby room. It's something we will continue to monitor. That one's more difficult because there's only four students per young adult. Um, so we'll just keep looking at that, but they're getting ready for that this summer. And then Cast Card Kids will be offered throughout the summer and that works in conjunction with summer school. So it's only half days on the day summer school is available and then full days when there's no summer school. And then I have a whole bunch of committee updates to share. So school improvement committee um, does not meet until the end of May. So we work with kind of the end of the year and our data, but we do continue those school improvement efforts all year round. So we've got those five focus areas and that's integrated into curriculum, council, professional development work, staff meetings, PSC meetings. And so um, even though that committee um, just meets three times throughout the year to monitor that change in data and, and change in proficiency, uh, that work continues. And right now we're able to see, even though we won't get our state testing results until either the summer or the fall, we do take the STAR test or district assessment in March and that gives us a pretty good idea. It's usually a pretty accurate representation. What we anticipate is a, a nice steady increase in proficiency. So we see more students who are proficient or advanced, less students who are basic or below basic. Um, and that increase 
sometimes is not always reflected on the school report card, right, as, as um, in the overall score and the overall stars, but our goal as a district was proficiency levels, and we're seeing that steady increase. Sometimes, like last year, we saw a pretty big increase. You'll see it kind of when we start to taper off a little bit, come up, taper off, and we're excited to see that continue to rise, and that's our goal. So we'll keep working on that. Um, curriculum Council continues to meet, so lots of district communication, lots of CLC work, especially when we do data and CLC meetings. One change that we did make for next year is using that star district assessment four times instead of five times. Uh, it's really important data and we're using that data in more and more ways. We also don't wanna over test kids, especially at the upper level. We're also gonna offset the test a little bit so they don't fall the same week as finals. That's mm -hmm. a lot for kids to go through. Mm -hmm. And then at the elementary, what we're doing is because we have those data meetings right after that, that's the same time those teachers are working on report cards, which is really an intensive process. And it's hard to have more meetings during that busy time. So by having them just one or two weeks earlier, we still get meaningful data and it works better for both students and staff. So little changes I think will make a big difference. And then we continue to work on pacing guides. So mapping out the standards where they go and making that a little bit more sustainable. So it's just ongoing work that happens rather than this big overhaul in the summer or throughout the year. So we're excited about that too. Uh, let's see, we had a parent advisory committee. So we continue to meet monthly. And we did a couple updates because we've had quite a few meetings now. It's nice just to keep the community up to date on how things are happening. So we talked about the possible referendum. We talked about the community survey coming out. Uh, we gave an update on food service because we've made a lot of growth there and that was a big focus area, but we wanna continue to touch base on it. We talked a little bit about assessment data. Um, and then what we kind of realized is that because it's different members attending each meeting, we went back and talked a lot about the school report card and some of that information, even though we had covered it at our previous meetings, because different people were there and able to make it with busy schedules and young children. So I'm just thinking through what's the best format to make sure we get information out to the most people possible, but also don't repeat the same topics for people who are able to attend. So it's just a little bit of figuring it out as that committee becomes more sustainable over time. And um, this was our first year, so a little bit of a, a learning curve. And then we finished our discussion talking about for students who are proficient and advanced, how are we supporting and challenging them? That's a topic we brought to curriculum council, staff meetings mm -hmm. at the middle school, high school, at the elementary mm -hmm. level, um, grade level meetings, getting parent community input. And so really it can be outlined in three categories. And then I actually brought this to the head of gifted and talented at the state level too, just to do try to see what feedback do you have, what ideas, where are we missing pieces? And so if you think about it, the, the main goal is that all students have challenging and engaging material all the time, not just for one part of their day or not just for one class, but every day. And so we intentionally select resources and practices that are gonna just be really challenging and engaging for all students. So we talked about exactly what those are. Um, the second um, kind of middle column would be unique opportunities. Uh, so an example would be like the children's theater. So that's open to everyone, it's inclusive, nobody is excluded from it, but it also gives the opportunity for students who excel in that to take on these roles. Another example would be the spelling bee. We include all students, we encourage as many students as possible, and students who are advanced spellers can go on to compete at the middle school level, mm -hmm. at uh, CESA 12, and we even had a student at the middle school compete at the state level this year. So really providing lots of great opportunities for all students. And then the third option is sort of individualized support. And so although we have a priority on it's that teacher-led instruction, screen-free learning, we also know that through our programs like Achieve 3000, Alex Math, um, there's Lexi at the younger grades that students get um, their work is exactly at their level on the thing that they're working on. It's usually a pretty short time where we're kind of narrowing that down to maybe 20 minutes at the elementary, maybe 20 to 30 at the middle school, high school, but it's specifically on what students need. And doing that has allowed students, we have students in the fifth grade who are working on sixth grade and seventh grade level math through Alex because they're able to move at their own pace, yet they're still going really deep with that fifth grade content. So we're making a lot of progress with that system and then we continue to add more pieces to it and, and make sure we have that same opportunity in all content areas, not just math and reading time. So that's been a big goal for us lately. Um, let's see, I do have a quick update on strategic planning process. So a subcommittee of long range planning is meeting to look at our district strategic goals. And you'll remember those are like graduate 100% of our students, um, reduce the achievement gap, increase uh, proficiency in all areas, um, the green and healthy uh, priority, uh, the curriculum that is specific to the state expectations as well as our local community, kind of these broad overarching goals. That team's gonna meet and just organize those soon. They're about to, they're very concise, very easy to list, um, really easy to communicate and gather feedback on. 
but then also look at how are we meeting those and that process will then impact the building goals we achieve in the fall, um, the individual goals, the resources that we purchase. So really helping just kind of shore up that process and, and tying it in with the feedback we get from the survey from the referendum for community survey that doesn't have that. And then the last committee, we had lots of committees meet just recently. The last one was the wellness committee. That one meets quarterly. And so that group um, had a few overarching goals this year, increase Castle Grove Pride, um, provide Wednesday wellness opportunities for staff, increase social events. We also went through the wellness policy. So we do that each year and just review how are we meeting or exceeding the expectations listed in that policy. And then the last piece is we started to really focus on student data related to wellness. We looked at a lot of academic data, but where what do we look at for wellness data? So one of those pieces, um, we have the YRBS mm -hmm. data that comes at the middle school level, which is mm -hmm. really informative. We also at the elementary started to gather some data from our upper elementary students saying, what, what are you interested in learning about? How can we support you? Some topics that came up were managing stress, dealing with friendships, and positive self-talk. So then we guide our instruction, our school counseling lessons focus on those, and then also gathering resources and outside speakers um, and materials and presentations to provide that for students. So I'm excited that that committee has started to move into the realm of student data and increasing student engagement. Wanted to touch base with Ivy talking about our school improvement stuff and talking about all the standardized testing. Um, we've been getting some tentative numbers back from ACT um, and talking with Ms. Lutz right now. Our average for our building is a 19.6, which is above last year's state average, which was 19.4, um, which is almost a full point higher than where we averaged last year. So the work that we're doing, that we're leading with school improvement, it is starting to show. So it's pretty awesome. I don't know what the state average is yet for ACT, but I'm, that stays pretty steady throughout the state. But so we're higher than the state average at this point in time, and that's that's awesome. Um, I do. Um, I am wondering. <laughs> you've got the goals for the district that were in place now. Mm -hmm. um, could could I or could we all get a copy of that, or could we yeah. get email it to us? Yes, absolutely. And, yep. and the other thing that I was going to do this a long time ago, and I kept kind of forgetting and dropping it away. On on the agenda each month, Heidi, could you put the mission statement of the school either at the very top? I mean, I think that would be a great place to put it so that it's, it's there in front of us every month. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're good on the administration. Well, just a reminder that we meet again in two weeks. So the new agenda will be posted next week. And something that we're finishing fine tuning is uh, the bus. So mm -hmm. the bus is a uh, experimental opportunity for kids and uh, could really take off any day. So that'll be on there. And we're possibly going to look for a spotlight mm -hmm. to end the year with some things that we're going to try to administer. So um, those reports will be next week, Wednesday. <laughs> Quick turnaround. Real quick. <laughs> All right, um, we have a few things on the consent agenda. We have a motion to approve those. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any considered? Discussion items, legislative updates. It's quiet in here for anybody to talk. Uh, K to 12 update. Um, I'm not going to read the talking points since we put them in your packet now, so it doesn't pay to repeat it unless you have any other questions. Yeah, they're in your shared drive if you want to send them to me. Any, any other discussion about it? Um, okay. Uh, the Washington Educator Council. Uh, minutes from the meeting that Rick provided are in the uh, packet. Uh, they had a pretty productive meeting. Uh, so you can see areas that we talked about areas that we finalized decisions that were made and then board action that uh, may come and the board action would be to handle uh, that down the road but mm -hmm. pretty good meeting last meeting for the year we met with denise uh, rick and i just to talk about the importance of uh, maintaining that um, we had a uh, retiring one but um, who's else the elementary That's jim march is retiring so you're having three people that have been on but doing a long time 
just talk to you about the fundamentals of how we get together, we communicate, we deal with issues there, which is really not what I said. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all anonymous. And um, she seemed to be fairly optimistic that that would continue in some form. And just with other board members that are retiring on board. Begging. No, I mean, we ask <laughs> yes, people for it. Yeah. You can nominate people. <laughs> yes, nominate. So, Rick, I mean, I know you have an organization you meet monthly, and um, is that okay if we just have to ask Rick? Trip me up a little bit. And now you, you did make all those suggestions to me. I yep. did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and, um, and she told the captain that I was here, so she was, you know, very interested in getting that going. You know, she said that really points to that. You know, I've been kind of a main organizer since the Out of Standing Committee for all my years as a school district. Mm -hmm. So it's probably one of the more valuable committees in the world. Yeah, yeah post, post Act 10, there was a lot of hard feelings, mm -hmm. and this committee was formed, and we were able to talk through things that were still the Washington School District, we're still about helping union people and working together, and it does not have to be animosity. So we've worked through everything formally, and it's just yeah, it's 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 absolutely not. Yep. Okay. Just for the same purpose. Yep. Thank you. Individual action items. So let's see. Go ahead with commissioners and let's do the list. I make a motion to approve the Remy Sansoni contract for the 24 25 school year. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, Tina, I'm not sure I'm hearing you, but um, if you want to say no, you're going to have to speak up loud or say yes, one or the other, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, if I'd like to say no, maybe I'll raise my hand or something. All right. Go ahead. So I got to watch this guy for her hand going up. Right? <laughs> no, no. Okay. Okay. I'll just stay unmuted now. I'll just stay unmuted. We're good. All right. I'll be, I'll just be very, I'll be very quiet over here. <laughs> All right. Number two. Great process. It is. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number three. I move to approve Aaron Austin as middle school track head coach. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number four. I move to approve Alexandra Fredinger as ground caretaker. Any discussion? She's doing an amazing job already. I mean, she is a worker. She's almost as looking. She's helping out with Boston. She's with the kids in the woods. Uh, she's amazing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number five. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Make a motion to approve Jessica Mitchell as the high school ERA position. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number seven. I move to approve Shelby Balwig as high school ERA position. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number eight. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> second. How do you pronounce his name? Christian. <laughs> and you have a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Make a motion to approve Forrest Mann as band instructor. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number 11. I move to approve C for 12 shared service agreement for the 24 25 school year. Any discussion? It's been removed by the administrative team of the new school year for weather and for all the services needed. Mm -hmm. Which Favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number 12. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve Aaron Garrity as the new school assistant track coach. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. We are now adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>